Welcome back to my survival difficulty no damage all collectibles walkthrough for the evil within 2. This is chapter number 6 and this chapter is called on the hunt and we're going to start things right now and carry over from chapter 5 because honestly I don't think this chapter is too bad. I mean we're going to have to be very sneaky and I guess that can present some problems sometimes but aside from that in terms of difficult encounters we don't really have anything uh, in the previous chapter we had two boss battles and they can be somewhat troublesome if you're not prepared but in this chapter things are a little bit more calm and there's actually going to be a bunch of cutscenes for us to witness as well first we're going to do a few upgrades here not that I can do a whole lot but might as well put that green gel that I obtained by beating the guardian to good use. There's nothing wrong with being cautious, but you can't avoid fighting forever. So let's see here. Combat skills. Still don't have enough for that one, but I can increase Sebastian's endurance, and that's going to come in handy. I'm really upgrading this one simply because it can be you know kind of annoying the fact that Sebastian even when you upgrade his endurance the guy really can't run for all that long and in this game since a lot of the time it will be traveling from one place to the other and they're fairly long trips sometimes if you can't even just run a little bit faster uh, things can drag themselves out quite a bit and that's why it's annoying that they included a trophy on classic difficulty and Sebastian can't have any upgrades on classic difficulty it's not so much that you actually need most upgrades but the fact that Sebastian is so slow can really be annoying and frustrating simply because it takes him so long just to get anywhere and as you can see here I mean this is endurance level 3 and he still can't run for all that long. Uh, I don't care how out of shape he is. I'm pretty sure that most people would be able to run more than 10 seconds in a row uh, at a relatively fast pace. And he's not even running that fast, honestly. Uh, but I don't know. I guess he skipped cardio class. I this don't know what's going on, but... Like I was saying in this chapter, uh, we're going to be sneaky for the most part. This place is messing with my mind. First, let's match these lines here. And let's get some items. And you know, it really wouldn't be that bad. I, I realized that he couldn't just keep running all the time at a very fast pace. It makes sense that he gets tired. It does. It just seems like it's a little bit too quick for my taste and uh, I don't know. Anyway, I see you over there, waking up in the morning, getting shot in the head, makes perfect sense. Let's get some more parts. And now that we have the pouch, let's get out of here. And we're going to get another locker key, which is right up there. There we go. Locker key number 14. We haven't opened any lockers, but at this point we really don't need to. In fact, if you followed my Evil Within walkthrough back in the day. A lot of the times it's actually better to wait until closer to the end of the game to open the lockers. Because then all of a sudden you'll find yourself with a lot of resources. Oh, just come after me so I can blow you up. I think that one guy's still alive. Yep. He's going to see me. You guys are annoying. Stop running after me. I swear, 
it's like I have to blow an arm and a leg to, get, to kill you. Anyway, let's go down. Keep forgetting that using even words as killing is a bad thing on YouTube now. But there's no ways to go around it in this game. I mean, it just is what it is. Um, let's go through here into oh. the... Well, I don't want to know what that stuff is, honestly. It's gooey and it's sticky. And it's rather white. I am above making jokes like that, but considering how people are in this game, I think we all have a good clue. Stop and listen to yourself, Myra. A secret society abducted Lily and staged her death? Do you realize how crazy that sounds? But it's true! Why can't you understand that? I know it's hard to accept, Myra. But she's gone. Our little girl is gone. But I have proof! Look! Myra, you're obsessed. You need rest. Once you get past this, you'll learn to accept... No! I'll never accept it. If you won't help me, I'll find out the truth on my own. Myra. Okay, guys, make sure you get that slide. And I gotta say, being in a situation where you know you're right and something's wrong, but no one believes you, or everyone's just lying to you, that seems like a rather bizarre situation to be in. Anyway, let's go through the gooey door. And I'm kind of, you know, uh, well, I wouldn't say shocked because this is the evil within, but <laughs> the concept for this monster, I don't know where they got it, but it's something else. Although I guess I'll take it over, you know, the over sexual sexualized female monster so I guess this is a good alternative or just a little change I guess I don't really know how to put it anyway we need to sneak past this monster because if we don't sneak past him or her it could be her um, or it then we will have to enter open combat and I would say it's very hard to avoid taking damage if that happens. So we are going to be sneaky. And we'll wait for it to turn back around. There we go. And now let's just wait here and wait for our moment to escape. I wonder who pitched the idea for a monster like this. I can imagine uh, a meeting between the writers or the creators or whatever for the Evil Within 2. I gotta get the hell out of here. And they must have been thinking, okay guys, we already have a monster with a camera on its head and with giant model legs wearing high heels. We have a monster with multiple female heads. Um, any other ideas that, you know, seem appropriate, and, you know? And someone in that table said, yeah, let's make this guy a white, gooey, mo white monster that, you know, grabs onto Sebastian and... seems to leave his mark wherever he goes. Yeah, we, it's a good thing that we left it, that room, isn't it? We have to shoot it four times, by the way. If you do that, um, be fucking stable. you'll be set free. And uh, we don't have to worry about that thing now. Anyway, let's get this door open. There's a file inside. I suppose for you know, people like us who've played games like this for such a long time, it gets to a point where it 
does you know maybe it doesn't even really affect us the way the monsters look and the way they create the monsters but but maybe it should you know maybe we should think about it every once in a while um because it seems that all monsters in this game have like a certain team going on for them <laughs> and you know you have to laugh about it because then what else are you going to do Anyway, let's go through the door and let's witness a very long cutscene. Someone's been watching. Lily. Whoever's been here was gathering data on her. Don't move. You're Mobius, right? I- Shut up! <clears throat> Don't say a word! You're not one of us. No, I'm not. Kidman sent me. Look, I'm here to help, okay? My name is Sebastian Castellanos. You're lying. Sebastian Castellanos is dead. What? No. Who told you that? Turn around. Do it slow. You're Yukiko Hoffman. How do you know my name? I told you. They sent me in here to find my daughter Lily. The core. I'm telling you the truth. I know. You do? Lack of microexpressions and deflection. No verbal parroting. I've seen enough to know you're telling the truth. Right. The team psychologist. I have to use whatever tools I have to survive. Combat isn't my forte. I'm here. Sorry for pointing my gun at you. So they're sending independent contractors now? That means things aren't improving. Have you found any other team members? I have, but the only one I've found alive is O'Neill. Liam is alive? Good. Has he made any progress on stabilization? The big emitter's back on. But this place is still falling apart, and I think it's all because of this psycho that kidnapped Lily. He's running loose in Union, and can manipulate this place at will. That means my theory is correct. This is more than a core disconnect. We doctors don't like to use the term psycho in pejorative terms. But in this case, it's apropos. Only a clinically diagnosed psychopath could affect STEM like this. A psychopathic personality type using Lily to amplify his power. This is the worst possible situation. You're a shrink. Any suggestions on how to defeat him? Psychopaths are antisocial, lack empathy, and exhibit sadistic tendencies. But their main commonality is their pathologic egocentricity. They don't care about people, only themselves. Can you think of anything that would be important to him? Yeah. He thinks he's some sort of artist. It's all he talks about. Then maybe the best way to attack him would be through his art. Destroying something valuable to him could knock him off of his guard. I'll keep that in mind. But I've got to get to him first. He's holed himself up in the theater. Right. So exit D5 then. It's right here. Just in the next room. Let's pair communicators so that we can stay in touch. I'll review my files and see if I can't dig up any more information about what's going on. I still feel like there's more to this. Regardless, he's probably going to be difficult to fight. Feel free to help yourself to anything here you might need. So does Lily really think I'm dead? Or was that just a part of your lie detecting test? Sorry to break it to you, but she does. I thought it was the truth, too, until just now. But over the years, I've learned to take everything Mobius tells me with a pinch of salt. It wasn't difficult to see you were telling the truth. Why would they do that? What kind of monsters do you work for? I know it's not right. But consider this. 
Lily is probably less traumatized by thinking you're dead than by thinking you're alive, but she can't be with you. Yeah, maybe. But what will happen when I finally find her? Don't worry. She'll believe the evidence of her eyes once she sees you. If Mobius knew to keep psychopaths out of STEM, then how did one end up in here? I don't know. Every individual in STEM was subjected to a battery of psychological exams prior to placement. And we've been observing them from here, in secret, to keep an eye out for mental instability. Yeah. Well, that didn't work. Unfortunately, psychopathy and sociopathy are incredibly difficult to diagnose correctly. Psychopaths tend to be cunning and highly intelligent. Aware of their own diagnosis, they're able to disguise themselves among us. The fact that this one was able to fool us? He's obviously adroit and self-aware. Disturbingly so. Great. So the tests only filtered out the weakest of psychos. I feel terribly responsible for all of this. I helped devise those tests. You said you think there's something more to this? I studied the Beacon incident extensively, so that we could avoid another disaster like that. In that case, the person in question was the core. But even then, the environment remained relatively intact. Something just doesn't seem right here. What do you mean? The creatures in here. The dissolution of Union. The total breakdown in communication with Mobius. It just seems like a lot for one person. Even with the power of the core. He mentioned someone before. Another person who wanted the core's power. That could mean... No. It's too horrible to contemplate. What? There's only one thing that could be more powerful than a psychopath in here. But I need to do some research before I can commit to the theory. Yeah, well, you do your research while we go out there and potentially die. Seems like a fair deal. Same thing with O'Neill, I guess. And what's up with her hair? It looks like she just got out of the shower. Uh, either that or her hair is just really greasy. I mean, she has been stuck in here for a week, so... Maybe that's why O'Neill is bald. That way he doesn't have to worry about it. But... Yeah. It does seem a little bit off. Anyway, make sure you get this delicious coffee. It's not Starbucks coffee, by the way. And that's why Sebastian likes it. And now... We don't... We uh, How about... Let's get the remaining collectibles for this chapter, since the chapter... It's not over yet, but it's essentially over at this point. So... We'll go through here. There isn't anything else for us to pick up here. And even if there is, we'll, we can just get it later. But anyway, let's get out of here. This might not be a bad time for you to save your game, by the way. Uh, the next chapter... Uh, the next two chapters are kind of tough. Uh, just because, again, we're going to have boss battles and... If you want to take a break here, it might not be a bad idea. But there is one more collectible for us to get during this chapter, and it's another memory. So... First, let's get the coffee. Almost forgot about the coffee. That also counts as a collectible, by the way. Uh, every coffee that you drink, or the coffee pots or whatever, they also count as collectibles, so make sure you get them. I think that coffee is from Colombia. But anyway, let's... I guess I can't carry any more harpoon bolts. And that's okay, let's not go to the safe room now. Uh, instead, let's get the next memory. Damn it. Can't feel my hand. That thing nearly tore my arm off. Never gonna kill it with this pea shooter. Need something bigger. I just need to get into that storage room outside the safe house. But Stevens has the key. She'll come back with the key and the APC. I just need to stay alive. So tired. Just gonna rest here and I wonder what almost ripped his arm off. Was it a goo monster or was it something else? 
Um, I guess we'll probably find out sooner or later, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, let's get some more upgrades done and let's watch that slide that we just collected. Uh, because again, it leads to a conversation between Sebastian and Kidman and we need to listen into all of those. Although they are kind of awkward interactions, but we'll see. Pick up, Kidman. I'm here. The first time I saw Myra, she was wearing that uniform. I think I fell in love with her right then and there. I didn't want to admit it to myself. But after she was injured on duty, I knew I couldn't risk not telling her how I felt. She was such a great wife and mother that I sometimes forget she was a great detective, too. She was right. She knew there was something fishy about Lily's death. I, I mean, kidnapping. I should have believed her from the start. There's no way you could have predicted the truth, Sebastian. You know this. Okay, good stuff. And as a reward, we get some green gel. The kitty cat is always here for us, so that's good. But anyway, that's going to be it. 